Hey everybody, Happy New Year. I think this is my new, my first video of the new year, 2019, coming at you. I uh, wanted to make a quick video about National Wonders, kind of talk about my line of thinking, my opinion, give you my two cents, go over some different options, and overall just kind of discuss different things, and hopefully this will help out some of the newer players to the channel, newer players to the game, and perhaps create a debate or uh, get some insight from some of the people that are watching this you can drop me a comment down below so we're going to dive right in i'm unfortunately not able to recite the national wonders in order i'm going to try my best i just i'm working on memory i think i started out with this one right here so or maybe it was you know i'm not going to spend too much time we're going to start with the coliseum so <clears throat> during this age, I don't, again, I don't know exactly which one it was, but during this age, I decided to pick the Colosseum over the other ones. Um, it was awfully tempting. So with my line of thinking was either go with the Colosseum or go with this one right here. This allows you to summon an army. Um, in addition to your, you know, your current loadout once a day. And it also does increase the health of nearby castles and barracks. That is pretty strong. And I don't know. I guess when I initially made my choice at the Coliseum, I don't think I really gave uh, the Terracotta army any consideration that it deserved. I wish I would have really thought about it a little more. I ruled out Forbidden City. Forbidden City, um, And I'm glad I did. As I go through the game and firm up my understanding about this, this game, um, people in my alliance, people that follow my channel, people that watch my videos have often heard me see say that I'm not really impressed with medals. And for me, this is a waste of a national wonder, especially when you line it up with the Terracotta Army or the, um, the uh, Coliseum. Because, yeah, it's going to give you another town center. It makes it harder for someone to, you know, five-star victory you. Um, but there's there's still a chance for you to be five star. I mean, this doesn't make you exempt of a five star victory. Someone could definitely come in, kill both your town centers, make way with your resources, and still come out on top with five stars. So to me, it's kind of a waste, in my opinion, because as you know, I'm not impressed with medals. I don't care about losing the town center. I'm mostly concerned with keeping my my resources and protecting them and growing my my civilization or my you know my army or whatever uh the notre dame let's see what this is reduces the cost of library technologies and unit upgrades cannot be attacked once a day you may collect the bonus gold see to me i don't think there's a lot of benefit or value into that at all the bonus gold especially doesn't really matter because you have your road system and road or gold is the easiest resource to keep uh, easiest one to collect as well so to me it doesn't really uh, it's not going to really outweigh anything as far as like what else what other choices you have library technologies and unit upgrades there's a slight benefit to that but some of the things i've said before was i'm going to spend the resources anyway i'm going to collect the resources i'm going to protect the resources you know a little break here and there really doesn't mean a whole lot however again back to the terracotta army um that's pretty cool i mean it is especially as an attack attacking enthusiast like myself i'm all about coming at you coming at you coming at you attacking two three times a day even uh most days but you know i i, I get this is one piece where i'm just kind of like leaving it up to you guys it's either between during this age it's between the Terracotta Army and the um, Coliseum. At the time when I started the game, I chose the, Col the Coliseum. And I'm pretty generally happy with it. Um, to talk about this a little further, I went ahead and found some resources that we can discuss things further on. And that kind of makes me feel a little better about my... Um, whoops. Let's keep it like this. Uh, it makes me feel better about my decision. Because as you go through the ages and continue to advance, um, the, it, it, it spawns out defenders. Those defenders are going to get stronger per age. Right now, I think mine, because I'm an industrial level 
They are like shock infantry, and they're pretty badass. Um, they do have multiple waves. They can re they can respawn multiple waves in your protection. And the actual, I don't really know what it's called, but the area that it covers where it triggers the defense um, is pretty big. It covers nearly the whole map. So those guys are going to start coming at coming at the attackers on defense relatively quick. Um, as you can see, the damage increase is 200%. Um, the attack speed increase is 50%. This is for 12 seconds. The radius is 3. And of course, just like all the other ones, there's going to be that 23-hour cooldown. So uh, we're going to get back to that. I am pretty pleased with it. I do use it. I tend to... I mean, I, I see a difference. I mean, when I highlight my troops with the strength of the gladiator, I mean, they definitely do mad damage. And that should increase, obviously, when you start advancing more in the ages. That's going to get more effective because your troops itself, their base damage is going to get um, stronger as you advance. So this is a good, it definitely is a good national wonder. I highly recommend it. I'm extremely happy with it. But I never really looked into, I hope I'm saying it right, the Terracotta, terracotta uh, Army. What this says, and again, this is from like the wiki pages, so I don't know exactly what's true and what's not. Like those stats that I pulled up just, just a minute ago, they could be untrue. I'm not really sure. I think this is all fan-made stuff, but I definitely see a buff and a bonus when I highlight my guys with it. Um, one thing I wanted to point out with the Terracotta Army is that you get 10 extra soldiers, 10 archers, and those do advance more. I'm sorry, those um, those troops, just like everything else, as you advance through the ages, they get stronger. So a lot of benefit there. I kind of wish I would have thought about giving, giving this more consideration in the beginning when I was deciding what National Wonder to go with. Who knows, I may save up my crowns and make the change later on just because I think it would be a little more devastating with my expansive Roman army plus another 20 troops. Um, and seeing how I only use heavy tanks, tanks, and artillery usually. And uh, I think that would just really, really supplement my army and um, my play style and my attack style. So definitely consider them. At this point, I can't tell you which one's stronger, you know, the the gladiator personally i'm sorry the coliseum i think is more effective with its defense it gives you that bonus in attacking and this has a little bit of a defense but it you know that this i can't discredit this one so i'm gonna be thinking about this i may have to come back and let you all know what i'm gonna do but as of right now i'm gonna stick with the coliseum and maybe continue saving crowns and you know think about it i you know if you think Whatever you guys think. I mean, you let me know in the comments if you're happy with the Terracotta Army because I'm really interested in that. And I'm thinking, you know, maybe change it moving forward, like in the future, or maybe change it back or whatnot. But right now I'm satisfied. So let's move along. Uh, there was one thing that I wanted to add um, with the Coliseum and what I think is a benefit, like I started to discuss, this, I don't know, this area where it, you know, um, activates the defenders is, as you can see, pretty big. It covers almost my whole map. And this guy right here complements it really well. Um, you're going to get the 20% and the 15% uh, increase on your um, troops. And that does impact this as well. My first wave is at three, um, three seconds. So that does help them, them combined. But since we're on subject of this, let's talk about it. The Arcopolis, I think is how it's pronounced. Or I just can't read. It's okay. Either way, this thing's pretty sweet. I will never discourage anybody to selecting this. In fact, I think this is the best option for this age. Um, it's been recently um, throttled a little bit. This used to be 20% spawn time, 20% 20 defender health. Um, but they re recently took it to 15%, and that's cool with me. I mean, that's cool with me. If you guys know and watch my videos, you know that I'm supplementing this with my uh, museum. 
So the 15% is just adding on to what I'm going to have going on through my museum. So, and of course the defender spawn time as well. As long as that's 20%, I'm cool because I'm going to, we'll just show you real quick for the new viewers. Everyone else should know what I got going on, but so I do have defender hit points, defender hit points, defender damage. So that's going to work real well with that national wonder. And then of course, you guys already know defender spawn times at 20%. Go back and watch my other videos because that is not the end of that story. But anyway, let's see what other options I had when I start when I picked this. Let's see. To me, I, I, re I recall not liking any one of these. You know, it was a real easy decision for me. But let's see. Grants and a bonus to nearby farms. Slight benefit. Like I said, there's other ways to do this thing to supplement that. You can do this with the museum efforts as well as the university. So that to me, you know, not a huge benefit, kind of a waste of space. I wouldn't recommend it. Stonehenge grants bonus gold. Again, bonus gold doesn't really mean a whole lot to me because in my experience, gold is easiest to get, easiest to farm, easiest to keep. It also um, increases the effective, uh, effectiveness of your road network when connected to your town center. You know, to me, the road center, the road network is just a bonus anyway. And as you could see, I've maximized that pretty well. When, when you look at it, I have a lot of different um, buildings connected to it. And as I start clearing these forests, I'm going to be able to do that even more. And that basically increases your, um, your road income anyway. So I don't know. I mean, this is already just kind of a bonus in addition to your caravans. I don't see benefit to that. So I'm going to say pass on that one. Let's see what else we got. And last but not least, Hanging Gardens. Increases the resources gained from nearby fruit trees. No, see, I can already just stop. I mean, like, just stop. Don't get this, all right? The nearby fruit trees, we're going to look at those in just a minute. The gold mines, um, the uh, increases the frequency that they can be gathered from. See... To me, I don't think this needs to be improved in anything because if you look at it, it um, let's see, when does this come back? I got an hour left. I don't know. It's just, it's not much of an issue. Um, like, and those are real easy to, to, uh, to farm and keep. And it's just not a big deal. It's just don't waste your, don't waste your national wonder on that. In fact, I don't think I've ever attacked a, um, a base that had one of those. At least I don't recall ever seeing those in the game. So not a huge popular choice, but there are ways to speed up um, the trees in the, uh, I think it's with this guy. Maybe not speed up the trees and speed up the, um, the gold mines. Is it through this gentleman or this guy? Yeah, see, it's through this guy here. So like, um, this is going to decrease the time to harvest from the trees or gold mines. So, like, really, you don't need to focus on that. And then this is also going to increase the yield from it. So that means what you're going to get from the, the harvest. So really, stay away from that one. Pick this bad boy up. If you don't have it, save your crowns and get this mamma jamma because this thing is just a beautiful thing. And I'm, glad, I'm very, very fortunate that I picked that up, not even knowing how important powerful that thing can be next is going to be this guy right here the Taj Mahal um, I'm pretty happy with this I don't recall what I other options I had we're gonna take a look in a minute um, one thing I never even noticed this increases the loot stolen by 2% I don't know I never noticed that that's pretty strong um, considering the fact that you have your your blessing here that I almost always, always, always attack with. This guy right here. In fact, we can just buy it right now. Because this guy right here is going to get you some extra 15% um, extra money. Um, and then you also have another uh, way to pump that up. And that's through the this guy right here, which I'm... I'm leveling up right now. I don't neglect my university. I've said that before. You could also 
level it up even more here. So don't even worry about that. Um, you have that as an option and that's gonna increase this, I guess. I don't know, this is the first time I've ever seen it. The reason I got it, like I was kind of rambling there, the reason I picked this one up was for the bonus mercenary per day. Um, because sometimes I wanna use my, these um, trade goods for my um, blessings. And anytime that I can use my trade goods for blessings, that'll take away from my mercenary camp. So it's always good to get that free mercenary, free up some trade goods. That way I can use my um, trade goods for the uh, blessings. So that was really good idea for me, at least in my opinion. Let's see what other options we had while I selected that. Let's see, let's see what this um, in gray uh, increases trade good capacity and refunds some of the resources stolen by opponents. I mean, sounds good, but trade trade good capacity, you can increase that in the library and refund some of the resources stolen by opponents is always a good thing. However, that can be found, you can buff that up in the museum. Um, I do have, I don't know if I have it active anymore. Yeah, I do. Loot uh, resource refund plus 2%. So that must be where, this must be the 2% found in my Taj Mahal. I don't know why they put it there, but they did. I don't know. It's in my museum. Um, so really, I would stay away from that guy right there. So this first one, the Temple of Tikal, forget about it. Don't even try it. Don't even, you don't even need that. Slows down nearby invading ground troops and provides a health bonus to your ground forces. Strong, pretty cool. If defense... You know, defending your base is always good. I mean, you want to continue keeping your resources. Um, but my idea of that is, you know, this is actually a pretty good one. You know, I'm going to say this is pretty good. This would be a solid option. You could definitely consider this. Provides a health bonus to your ground troops. Hmm. What does that mean? Let's take a look. Hmm. Damn, did I make the wrong decision? An extra 10% health in the slow amount slows down nearby invading ground troops. You know what? This is actually pretty damn good. I mean, the mercenary camp, I saw the value in and I made my decision. I don't think I really considered this guy right here. Like I said, I may have to save up my crowns and... I might have to make a switch. This is actually pretty good. Because I am i don't care about metals, but I care about protecting my resources. And this is... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back and buy this one. I'm going to recommend this one first. I'm, I have to take a look at this one yet. Um, I haven't seen that one yet, but I might have to... I'm actually going to go ahead and buy this one. But it says slow down. What is this? Slow amount 40%. But what is, is that the whole map? Well, let's take a look. Let's see. Now you guys can see my bad spelling. Let's take a look. Whoops. Let's keep it like this. I hope this doesn't change. Honestly, though, what the heck is this thing? I didn't even look. I didn't even uh, really consider that, and I wish I would have, but this, that's the beauty of going back. Hindsight's twenty twenty. the hell is that thing called? I'm going to just spell anything, and hopefully, oh, here we go. Love you, Google. Let's see what you got. Does this cover the whole map? Is this just, for slows down nearby? Okay, so how close do they have to be, though? says, slows down nearby invading armies and provides a health bonus, which is great, but slows down nearby invading armies. What is the, what is the area covered, though? Like, how close do they have to be to that thing? Is it, does it cover the whole map? Is it a little small piece? Let's see.
Oh, here's another thing. Okay, so if you have the Acropolis Wander, it's 50% bonus. Um, so it's not, you can't stack that. Hmm. Interesting. So maybe I did do an okay decision, but I'm really curious about this 40% slow. What the hell? I want to know, like, what area does it cover? Like, what um, radius? Let's see. 40%. Bear with me, guys. I'm sorry. I don't want to start over on this video. I got to I gotta figure this out. 40% radius. Bear with me, guys, please. I'm super curious about this. What? Maybe it has a picture of it. That'd be kind of cool if I can just look at someone's base. Oh, that's kind of small. Okay, let me, let's take a look. I mean, I'm wondering though, if you could put that, you know what I would do? If I got this, I would show you where I'd put it. It's actually a pretty, you know what? I am going to get, I think I'm, I may get this. I don't want to guarantee anything, but let's, let's dream a little bit right here. So let's say I get that and I would put it right here. I'll show you. I mean, that's provided I don't change my base layout because once I become global and I get that um, that missile um, silo, I may change everything. But as of right now, if I were to keep my base the same, I would get, I would take this, this dude right here, right here. This is the, the wonder of topic. I would plop it right there, probably. I mean, I'd move some things around, and of course, these um, traps, these traps, see, my thought is, I would pop it there, and that would enable me to move my traps to, like, the other side, where a lot of times they attack when they want to go for my gold oil. So I would just outline this whole area right here. This is where I'm, have, I, I'm commonly attacked. If they're not idiots, and they go for my town center, if they're smart... They go over here and they, they attack me from the rear. So that would actually be a pretty strong, I would, you know, I would use my, I would use my traps and I'd just outline it all the way over here. And some over here, just in case. Huh. Something to think about. Thanks for bearing with me. We will move on. I am just really trying to wrap my mind on why I didn't even consider this. Did I not even see this? Or did I, I think I was blinded by the free mercenaries and thought, oh, I could just save my trade goods and use blessings, and which is a great tactic. It's a great strategy. I'm not going to tell myself that that wasn't a good idea. But I might have to change up. Huh. All right, moving on to the Blitzburg, uh, oh, I'm sorry, the Brandenburg Gate. So... I recall putting a lot of thought. I think let's see what was available. Let's just let's talk about all the other ones. I remember now. It was between the gate and the Statue of Liberty. Um we'll talk about the gate last. That way I would kind of collect all my thoughts here, but um Statue of Liberty gives you that bonus um of oil. I don't know how much oil they give you. Let's take a look. I'm sorry, guys. I, w I thought I was prepared. Damn it. How much gold do you get? This sucks. I'm sorry, guys. Statue of Liberty. Um, Liberty. Dominations. My bad, guys. My bad. I really... um. I really thought I was prepared for this video. Let's see, dominations, oil amount. So I didn't even really, I should have done this when I started thinking, um, when I started to uh, make my decision, I thought, oh, I can get, I'll just get oil, you know, another way. I didn't do a lot of research. 
and I'll tell you what my deciding factor was, but let's see how much, just for food for thought, how much oil do you get? 250 oil? That's fucking nothing. Excuse my French. That's absolutely bull crap. Um, that's not that great. Air attack units, 20%. That's pretty strong, but the reason I decided not to go with that is because you get 20% for your factory troops, and my line of thinking was air troops, you're limited to three. I can only have three planes, so that's 20% of airplane strength. I only have three of them, which is still strong, but I can have a whole entire loadout of just factory troops. So I thought to myself, well, I can have a whole army, 154 factory troops, or I can have three planes with a bonus. And seeing how I use heavy tanks, it was kind of a no-brainer for me. Um, so I decided not to go with the Statue of Liberty, even though it is strong. It's just, to me, not that strong. Provides a peace treaty once a week. Nope. Increases vault and food. No. So just know... I don't have to go into more, much detail about that. Just know, peace treaty, I mean, if you set your base up right, you're not going to need it. Just whatever. Kremlin. Increases health of nearby walls. Defenders will spawn from any of your farms destroyed in a battle. Uh, how many troops, though? I'm super tempted to go to Google, but I don't know. All right. Bear with me. Ah, oh, damn it. What was that again? That was the, uh, the Kremlin? Right. Guys, I am so sorry. I thought I was prepared, man. This sucks. Let's take a look. Uh, and I hate this damn Android keyboard. It sucks balls. There we go. Let's see. And again, these um, tools online that I'm referencing um, may or not be 100% accurate as well. So take everything, treat it as a salad bar. Take what you want, leave what you don't want. Just if you can get one solid thing from this video, I'm happy. You know, I don't care. I just want to help somebody somewhere. Um, what were you looking for again? Oh, the uh, defenders. How many defenders per... Okay, so you get two defenders per farm. Eh, I don't think... Uh, I don't know. I mean, there's some value. I mean, every one of these National Wonders has value, but we're talking about what are the best options for National Wonders. I would say no. It's between the Statue of Liberty and this, the gate. Um, I don't know what it's called. The... the Whatever the stupid gate is, the German gate, that's the one. Um, in addition to getting 20%, um, 20%, um, you also get this little uh, war tactic or this uh, this little tactic that um, it's, what does this give you? Okay, so it doesn't tell you what it is, but you have, I, I, mean, I have it in my loadout. Let's see if I can... Okay, so you're going to have this guy right here. This is from the, the gate. The um, blitz, This is called the Blitzkrieg, and it disables um, defender defender producing buildings. I absolutely love this. This thing is so sweet. This thing is so badass. Um, I just tear it up. I tear it up with that thing. So definitely think it's going to be um, you know a good idea. So I believe we can see what national wonders are available for the next age that I don't have access to yet. How did I do that last time? Hmm. There was a way that I can look at the next. Why did I do that? I thought they used they used to have it like right here where I can click them and see and I started gearing up and I remember when I hit the global age 
it's going to be a really tough decision for me. I'm going to really be lost. So let's take a look at the options. Um, just for the sake of the video, sake of people, if they're curious. Um, National Wonders. Um, global Age. Or maybe it's the Atomic Age. Let's take a look. I think it is the Atomic Age. There's nothing... I don't think you get anything for the global age. Let's see. What the? Whoops. Can't spell. All right. Here we go. Um. See what they give us here. If they, I hope they. What I'm hoping to do is just list them off, and we could kind of talk about it. Um, because honestly, I am stuck. I remember I was able to see the um, the upcoming national wonders that are going to be available to me. I just don't recall how to show you guys. I'm trying to find them. Bros, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know. This is kind of irritating. Um, let's see. What the crap? Let's see. Oh, there's a video there. Okay. Someone already made a video, so maybe you guys want to check this guy out. Um, just Google it. I personally don't have an opinion on it. You know, maybe I'll come back and make another video when I get to that age and we could talk about it. But I remember when I did see them, I was pretty unsure of myself. I was I was very uncertain on what to do. Um, actually, I know how to find it. Hold on. I just realized... I just wasted about a minute and a half. Sorry about that. I do know how to find it. My bad, my bad. All right. This is how you do it. This is how you find it. My bad, man. I knew I could find it. Okay, so let's continue on. I'm, I'm probably going to, hopefully I'll just go back and cut that part out. Um, but we'll see. The Sydney Opera House provides an additional citizen. Expeditions return 20% faster. The extra citizen might be pretty good. Um, airstrip troops train 20% faster. Assign an extra general to the Pentagon for defense. Pretty good. Collect three national trade good once per day. Deploy a peacekeeping force when destroyed. On this is pretty good. United Nations sounds kind of nice. Reduces university skill research time. 10%. Um, activate to reset all other wonder cooldowns once per week. What does that really mean? Activate to reset all other wonders cooldowns. I guess that could be pretty cool. Um, so yeah, to be honest, guys, I'm going to put a lot of thought into which one to select. Probably not the Opera House. Maybe the Pentagon. Maybe United Nations. I really don't know what to do with this with this age. With these, um, given the opportunity when I get to the Atomic Age, I'm just not sure what I would uh, what I'm going to select. It's going to be interesting. Just from off the top of my head. You know, my opinion, maybe United Nations or let's see. I mean, the extra general will be good, but you're wasting oil to put them in there. I guess that's not a huge big of a deal. It's, I mean, extra defense. I don't know. How much? Might have to go back to Google real quick and just see how many defenders spawn on the um, United Nations. 
But another thing, um, you know, if you use a, uh, um, a third general um, on defense, that's just limiting to the amount of defend the amount of uh, generals you can bring on your attack. So if you decide to go that route, you know, please consider that that you're if you know you use another defending um, general, you could be su suffering your attacks because you're using up your general. Because if they die in battle, I think they they have to cool down. United Nations, National Wonder. So wonder, um, dominations. So thanks for bearing with me, guys. Let's just, I just kind of want to take a look, show you guys. Let's see. I mean, is this worth it? United Nations? Kind of looks pretty badass. How many defenders do they get? So it deploys, okay, I get that it deploys the peace, um, peacekeeping force. Is that, so the, the Centaur tank, ARL-44 tank, the Republic Rifleman, like which one, are they all deployed? I mean, I'm just kind of curious here. What, like, oh, I see, I see. Hold on. So, do they have the same troops that come out of there? Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. So, yeah, it says right, duh, it says right here um, destroyed on defense, counting one of the each of the nation's unique upgrade, um, upgraded. Ah, as you can see, it's basically your, um, your nation's uh, unique troop. So mine would be like the infantry. I guess it's not too bad. I I don't know. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to, when that time comes. Maybe I'll make another video. Like I said, just to kind of decide on what that is. I'm gonna put some thought into that because I personally do not know what to do. What to do? That extra citizen might be beneficial. It might be enough to make that decision. Um, because as you advance the ages, you're, you're consuming more civilians to do upgrades and to build. I mean, it just, it becomes kind of a pain in the butt, but it's just one citizen. I mean, one citizen really isn't not that much. So we're going to have to consider this. We're going to wrap it up. I took enough time of your time searching on Google and being unprepared. Apologize for that. My message is sound. My intention is pure. Want to hook you guys up with my two cents as always. Coming at you with some new content. It's 2019. Um, wish you guys a happy new year once again. Hope this video gets positive. You know, I hope it was positive experience for you guys. Um, without further ado, let's take a look at my museum one last time. Because baby, look at this. Oh. Blau. Defender spawn time, 20%. Oh, yeah. And then as just for the new viewers, if you guys are still watching, just know it does not end there. I got this guy right here. Boom, boom. Another another uh, damage. I've been wasting my... I've been wasting my um, my crown... My, uh, my crowns. I just haven't been able to get something good. I'm waiting for something just mediocre or something decent. And I won't, I won't keep on rolling the dice there, but. And then I got this bad boy right here too. Real proud of this guy. So it's gonna be serious, man. That's my museum. Really stoked. And you guys have a good rest of the night. All right, I'm, I'm done with this video. I'm, I'm a little tired now. And a little embarrassed. I wasn't prepared. Won't happen again, guys. The hell.